You ever look at an armadillo and a pangolin and think, yeah, these two definitely share a weird little reptilian grandma. Same armor, same bug-eating vibe, but same curled up in a ball defense move. It's like they were cut from the same evolutionary cloth, except they weren't. Not even close. So today we're going deep on these two armored oddballs, the armadillo and the pangolin. We're talking what makes them different, what makes them weird, and how they somehow ended up looking like twins even though their family trees are growing on opposite ends of the evolutionary forest. All right, let's start with the basics. Armadillos are from the Americas, mainly South America, Central America, and the Southern US. They're actually part of a really ancient group called Xenarthrums, which also includes sloths and anteaters. That group evolved in South America when it was still its own isolated continent, doing its own weird thing. And armadillos are still weird. They've got low body temps, slow metabolisms, and extra joints in their spine, like little prehistoric tanks built for rooting around in the dirt. Now jump over to the other side of the world, and you've got the pangolins, native to parts of Africa and Asia. These guys belong to an entirely different group called Pholidotans. And get this, their closest living relatives are carnivores. Yep, the pangolins' distant cousins are lions, wolves, and bears. Doesn't make much sense when you look at them, right? Pangolins don't have teeth, they eat ants, and they curl into balls. But way back in mammal history, their line branched off from the meat eaters and took a totally different route. So, right off the bat, we've got two mammals that look almost identical, but evolved on completely separate continents from completely separate ancestors. And here's the wild part. They've never met. There's no overlap in their ranges. Armadillos are strictly new world, pangolins are old world. They didn't influence each other's design at all. Nature just handed them similar tools to deal with similar problems. How to survive in hot places full of ants and predators. It's like evolution gave both of them a checklist. Eat insects? Check. Need protection? Check. Live alone and avoid trouble? Check. And boom! Two armored bug eaters from different corners of the world, both looking like they belong in a fantasy video game. Now, let's talk armor, because that's what makes both of these animals look so bizarre and so similar in the first place. But here's the twist. Even though they both look like they're wearing some kind of medieval armor set, what they're actually made of couldn't be more different. Armadillos have actual bone in their armor. Seriously. Their outer shell is made of osteoderms, chunks of bone that grow in their skin, then get covered by a layer of keratin, the same stuff as fingernails. It's like they've got a built-in shield system growing right out of their backs. Some species have flexible bands between the plates so they can move more easily, and the famous three-banded armadillo can even curl into a perfect ball like a little armored pill. Other species can't roll up, though. They rely more on digging into the ground and bracing themselves so predators can't flip them over. Either way, they're built like tanks with a dirt addiction. In terms of size, armadillos range from tiny to surprisingly large. The smallest species, like the pink fairy armadillo, barely reaches 15 centimeters, 6 inches in length. On the other end, the giant armadillo can grow over 1.5 meters, 5 feet long, including the tail, and it's built like a bulldozer. Their overall shape is low-slung and compact, with short, strong legs and heavy claws made for digging. Their movement is awkward, kind of a low-to-the-ground waddle, and they're not built for speed. Their tail is armored too but stiff, more like a dragging counterweight than at all. It doesn't grab or grip anything. Now, pangolins, they're all about the scales. Their armor is made entirely out of keratin, no bone underneath, just overlapping sharp-edged plates that cover their whole body, including the tail. It's the only mammal in the world completely covered in scales. And here's the cool part. Every single species of pangolin can curl into a ball. When threatened, they just roll up, tuck their heads under, and let those razor-sharp scales do the talking. It's not just for show, either. A curled-up pangolin is so tough that lions have been seen giving up mid-attack because they literally couldn't get a grip. That's some serious defense. Pangolins are also more streamlined and elongated than armadillos. Their size varies depending on the species. The smallest, like the Philippine pangolin, grows to about 45 to 50 centimeters 
18 to 20 inches, while the giant ground pangolin can reach up to 1.8 meters, 6 feet from nose to tail. But even at their largest, pangolins tend to be more slender and agile. Some are ground dwellers, others are built for climbing with long limbs, sharp claws and a prehensile tail that works like an extra hand for gripping branches or hanging upside down. Their head shapes also don't match at all. Armadillos have a more triangular skull, a short snout and visible ears. Pangolins have small, narrow, earless heads with tiny eyes and long, tapered snouts. The whole design is optimized for sniffing out bugs and slipping into insect tunnels. Even their claws are different in function. Armadillos have short, blunt claws designed to dig through soil. Pangolins have long, curved claws perfect for ripping open termite mounds and climbing trees. They're more surgical, less brute force. Both armadillos and pangolins are what we call insectivores, meaning their entire lives revolve around ants and termites. And they don't just eat bugs casually. No, they're built for it. Let's start with pangolins. These guys are extreme specialists. They have no teeth at all just a ridiculously long, sticky tongue that can be longer than their body when fully stretched out. They snake into tunnels and chambers inside anthills or termite mounds and snap up hundreds of insects in seconds. Since they can't chew, they've evolved a muscular stomach lined with keratin and small stones. Yeah, they swallow pebbles on purpose to help grind up all those bugs. It's weird, but it works. They're basically armored vacuums with a built-in rock blender. Armadillos, meanwhile, do have teeth. Not impressive ones, but small peg-like teeth that let them chew a little. They're not picky either. While some armadillo species stick to ants and termites, others will go for worms, beetles, little reptiles, bird eggs, even fruit. They've got more of a whatever's around attitude. That makes them a bit more flexible than pangolins, which are strict bug-only diets. Let's talk about how these two weirdos actually live their lives, and what they do all day. Armadillos are little digging machines. Their front claws are made for tearing through soil, whether they're hunting for bugs or building a burrow. Most species live underground during the day and come out at night, though a few are active in the early morning or late afternoon. They're solitary, pretty awkward-looking on land, and surprisingly good swimmers when they need to cross a stream. Some can even hold their breath for minutes and walk underwater. They've got this odd, almost clumsy shuffle when they walk, but they're more agile than they look. When startled, they can jump straight up in the air, which unfortunately doesn't help much when the threat is a cull. Pangolins, depending on the species, either burrow or climb trees. Tree pangolins are especially agile, using their prehensile tails for balance and grip as they scale trunks and branches in search of ants. Ground pangolins are more like stealthy tanks, slow, deliberate, and incredibly good at disappearing. They're usually nocturnal and super shy, almost ghost-like in the wild. You could be walking right past one and never notice. When they do move, some species walk on their hind legs with their front claws held up, kind of like a tiny dinosaur doing a cautious stroll. Both animals are extremely solitary. No packs, no colonies, no social drama. Just one animal doing its own thing, usually under cover of darkness, sniffing out insects and avoiding predators. They don't want trouble. If something comes for them, they curl up and hope the armor does its job. Now here's where things take a bit of a heavy turn, because when it comes to how humans have treated these two animals, the difference is massive. Armadillos overall are doing okay. Most species are stable. And the nine-branded armadillo, the one people see all over the southern US, is actually expanding its range northward. These guys are adaptable, tough, and not too picky, which helps them survive in all kinds of habitats. But it's not perfect. The giant armadillo, found in parts of South America, is listed as vulnerable. It's big, slow, needs large territories, and its rainforest habitat is getting chopped up fast. Still, compared to pangolins, armadillos have it easy. Pangolins are in serious trouble. In fact, they're considered the most trafficked mammals on the planet. Every single species of pangolin is either vulnerable, endangered, or critically endangered. Not because they're dangerous or destructive, but because they're quiet, harmless, and unfortunately, valuable on the black market. 
In some parts of Asia, their meat is seen as a luxury dish, and their scales, made of keratin, same as human fingernails, are used in traditional medicine. There's no scientific evidence that pangolin scales do anything at all, but that hasn't stopped the demand. Millions of pangolins have been killed in just the past few decades. Even when laws exist to protect them, enforcement is weak, and since they're so shy and nocturnal, most people don't even know they exist, which makes it harder to rally public support. There are good people working to protect pangolins. Rescue centers, awareness campaigns, wildlife groups. They're trying, but time's running out. This isn't one of those maybe someday problems. It's already happening. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.